The younger generations, and we're talking here Gen Z, have been criticized in the media a lot lately. I'll show you in a second some of the stuff that's been done. But let's have a look at what we are talking about. If we talk about, because these generational divides are really interesting. They come up the whole time. So here's the office this morning, OK, just to say. There's editor Sarah, who's brilliant. Dredge Dan's very cross. He's checking the spelling of millennial, which I'll explain in a second. Here, and here we, I did this, OK? I'm quite proud of it. So I wrote down the generations, greatest, silent, boomer, Gen X, millennial, etc. Did a little post-it thing. Everyone's thinking, what are you doing, Jeremy? Well, that was the answer. So freeze it. And let's just have a look, closer look. So we're really clear. So if we go back, we've got Spitfire pilots here, the greatest generation, no question at all. Silent, that's my mum and dad, 1928 to 45. Baby boomers, Nina was born in 46, she's a baby boomer. Gen X, that's me, I was luckily just into Gen X, born in 65. Millennials, that's Storm, 81 to 96. Gen Z, 96 to 2012, that's my kids. And then actually there's another one now, Gen Alpha, 2013 to 2025. Interestingly, if we take them all together here, Gen Z is Reem as well, born in... 2002. 2002, perfect for Gen Z. Millennial, I mentioned, that's the thing that Dan was getting, getting onto me about. Two N's in Millennial. Ah! So Millennial, Storm and, uh, yeah, Storm. And her husband, uh, uh, that's irrelevant. <laughs> Gen X, I'm always... <laughs> I tell I'm you, sure I can't. Storm doesn't I, think that. No, no, no. But I mean, he's not. He's. It's not a big age gap. Gen X, sixty-five. The year I was born to nineteen eighty. I squeaked it. And so, what's really interesting? We've got a great panel today because Nina was born in forty-six. So, so Nina is at the. Well, the key thing, by the way, that we're talking about here is conflict between these two. So it's the. Ba so what happens is Gen Z say. Oh, the baby boomers have got everything. They got all the houses, they got the final salary pensions, they destroyed the NHS on the way out and the planet as well. The baby boomers say, we had outside toilets, right? They had it hard. They didn't buy a TV before they could afford it. They saved up. They saved up for a house. And if you come over here, I'll show you, this then broke into sort of open warfare in the Telegraph this week with an article by a guy called Tom Harris who says this about young people. Have a look. He says, rents aren't unaffordable. Young people just don't want to work. Ridiculous. And we then, I know, I knew you wouldn't like that. <laughs> and then we have Gen, this is the, Gen Z are an employer's nightmare. My 20s put them to shame. This is by somebody who works so hard to get a break. Unfortunately, her name is Sophia Money Coots. <laughs> and her dad is a baron who's a, a private banker. Anyway. It's so ironic that a millennial should say that Gen Z are work shy because... Looking at it from a different point of view, millennials, two N's or one N, come into pretty much the same category. Well, I don't know. I mean, I still work so socks off. But the, yeah, yeah, the interesting absolutely. thing here is you're a boomer. I'm Gen X, you're Gen Z. So we've got, I mean, if we storm walked in, we'd have a lovely spread of four generations. <laughs> and really we don't storm. often have the spread between the boomer on the panel and Gen Z. No, Richard, I, th I think it's really important that we have these conversations and I think it's really unhelpful for, for publications like The Telegraph to come out and effectively, you know, publicise and sort of add to this narrative that young people are just lazy. Well, it's war, isn't it? it? It's war and it's war because, as I understand it, you're, don't let me speak for you, but your generation are sick and tired of being told you've got to work harder when you look around you and you see the planet's on fire, the NHS has collapsed and you can't buy a house. So I think housing is the most important issue facing young people. The ONS came out with stats last summer that found that the average house price is about 8.4 times the average salary. This has significantly increased over the last few years and the reason why is because we have a lack of supply. It's Economics 101, if you increase the supply of something, prices will come down. The reason why we've got a lack of supply is because of these perverse political incentives. You've got people who already ho own, uh, own homes, usually they are baby boomers, and they effectively will lobby governments, lobby local councils to block planning permission. So we're not building enough, so prices are going up extremely also, I mean, quickly. To, to be fair to baby boomers, you don't want to move house because the, the cost of moving is so high now. People used to move six or seven times in a lifetime. Absolutely. And, but the thing is, I live in a one-bedroom flat and have done for many, many years. Where, um, how am I going to downsize, put it that way, to give more room to somebody who needs a house? The, the reason that this country doesn't have 
as much housing as it needs because the sex, you know respective governments have not actually pushed it. But that's because Ma it means Mar your generation don't want to look at other people's houses. And then it's no, also no, Mar Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher started the, 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 the selling off of, of council homes, which may be in theory have been have been marvellous and, and aspirational. However, they then didn't follow that. She didn't then follow up by putting in a, so a, 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 a building, a building, no, a building okay. program. The problem is the fact that we've not been building enough. A building program that would replace the houses that were being bought. No, no, are you no, sure no, it's no. not, Reen? Is it's, it not just that you're not working as hard as as as, as Nina did? No. So, I mean, I, I think in it's her interesting youth. With, with the way the way in which also interest rates have impacted that. My parents have had, have experienced a a period of incredibly low interest rates, artificially low interest rates. Now they're ticking up, and I think that's the right thing to do economically. But when it comes to the experiences that my generation have had when it comes to mortgages, uh, if we even get there, You're I mean, only honestly... 21. You don't need to be no, buying a house now. I, I'm saying within the next 10 years, it's going to be incredibly unaffordable. Young people... You know, Thatcher's yeah. vision of a property-owning democracy has failed, and the reason why it has failed is because successive governments have looked at the short term, buying off pensioners with the triple lock on pensions by restricting house building because NIMBYs don't want houses in their area, and then it means that young people then have to suffer. It's not, is it, it's Nina, not would just you be... that. Go on, sorry. It's, it's, not, it's not just that. It's the fact that any, no government has actually replaced the housing. But you're it's not, not blaming just... work ethic, because the key story here is, Absolutely. are they lazy? Well, and you don't think so. Well, Reem, Reem. Reem is, is a prime example of someone who bucks that trend because she's actually sitting here. She's sitting, you know, she's got up and she's here and she's, she's got out of bed. Day. Yes, got exactly. That's quite a low. That's quite a low bar. Absolutely. To be honest. No, the, the, the thing is, you, you need to exclude Reem from that because she, right. she is obviously somebody who is fasting and go ahead and yeah, hard But she's still not got a house. Well, yes, there. but she's only 21. And I, I probably won't what, be able to get a what, house what, what, in the next 10 years. But you don't know but that. But is it what about the, the, change. the baby boomers often say? The reason your generation can't buy houses is because you spend all your money on smashed avocado. I know, smashed avocado, Netflix subscriptions. God, we're so privileged. I think it's ridiculous for, for any of anybody to make this particular argument. Intergenerational inequality is huge, and I think the housing crisis is key to that. The cost of living is hitting younger people the worst. And actually... No, it's hitting pensioners the worst. No, no, no. Because you can a, work and a, get a job, whereas many most yeah. pensioners a can't quarter, work. A quarter of pensioners are millionaires. Why well, are the amazing. government... Why that's is amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing. That's but they're Why millionaires is the because of their property. Yes, that's, that, but then, that's true. That, but, then, but then to move is going to I be suppose. a disaster. And, and the point is, and I, I think Dam Reem. Damien Green makes this really excellent point, that actually you know, the, the housing crisis affects first-time buyers as much as it affects last-time buyers. If you're a last-time buyer, so you've, you know, you're, you're an elderly couple, you've, all your children have moved out, you're in a big family house, what is incentivising you to move into a smaller house? No, nothing. OK, nothing. Let's, let's go good to Natalie. I want to see... Natalie, what generation are you in? You've got to declare your gen. Uh, I, I'm 1987. So you're Storm. So you're, yeah, you're, so you're our missing millennial. Brilliant. So are you, are you, do you feel that Gen Z are getting it in the neck from the boomers? So as I said to your producers, my son is 16 this year. He's um, not quite old enough to get the job, but he's looking. He's been saving since the age of 10 for a mortgage. <gasps> that was down to him. He's 10. Um, and he's literally been saying, right, so I need to make sure I've got enough money to pay this bill, this bill, this bill, this wow. bill. He's very sensible, wow. very sensible with his money. And he's working, um, is he? So I think he, 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 he's, work, he's going to be working when he turns 16. OK. Um, he's, he's already got a CV. <laughs> why can't, Nessie, why, why can't I address this to you and also to Rina? Why can't your son say, OK, I can't afford a house in the centre of Cardiff, Edinburgh, Manchester, London... I'm going to go and live on Stornoway. Because these days, you know, you could live in Orkney or you can live somewhere where they're actually in need of people to buy houses and, and you can boot up the computer, get on the Zoom and be at an office without even travelling. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, I, that depends if he wants to live there. I mean, I would never tell my children where to live. They can live wherever they want. Well, Buckinghamshire's the hard. The world. Well, you'll know about Buckinghamshire where you are. My goodness, the price of, of property there. Exactly. And, you know, 
to be fair to my kids, if they said to me, Mum, we're moving abroad, we're moving up north, I'd be like, as long as you're happy, go for it. Lovely. Wherever you can afford to go and live, go and live there. Let me ask Reen the same question. Why don't you just go and live... <laughs> I sound like I'm saying... Get out of the go, country! No, why don't you just go and live in, on, on the Yorkshire Moors or something? So, the, the stats I gave you from the ONS, 8.4 times the average salary. That's across all of England. So, even in, so in London, it's, it's much higher. It's well, about Grimsby, 12 times somewhere the where there's salary. a property crash. So, no, so if there is a property crash, that, that's Averages separate, don't, you don't look issue. for an average but at the moment, at the moment, property is unaffordable across the country. Now, you're right, it's much more expensive in London than it is in Yorkshire, but it's still expensive. The now, the reason for this is because there are If you buy, houses, say, in the north, of, the north of England or somewhere like Grimsby, yeah. the properties are much, much cheaper. Uh, yeah, yeah, but the yes, trouble is that when, when but Reen there's buys... There's no jobs her, there, that's when, the point. Well, OK, we're going to go, go, go to our break. I was just going to say, when when Reen buys her house in... I feel bad saying Grimsby, but let's, let's you know, or, 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 you know, sea houses near Durham. And you'd work from home, all the boomers then say, oh, it's not a proper job because you're not actually going... Anyway, OK. No, no, <laughs> always hang on, hang on, we're going to do more in a second. After the break, more calls. Do get in touch. Oh, but we are now talking about whether young people are work shy. We've had a conversation here about whether it's Gen Z or Gen Z. I'm aware a lot of people get upset when I say Gen Z. But as Nina has just pointed out, it is ZZ Top. I'm afraid. Peggy in Colchester, you're 90, Peggy. Yes, I am. Does that mean you're the silent generation? Yes, sir. or... I'm the what generation? I think, I think you're down as... When were you born, Peggy? Was it 34? Yeah. I think you're yes, the silent generation. Why am I silent? I'm not silent. Well, no, you've, you've, you've caught <laughs> it, but it's just, it's just the name. It's, I think because you had to go through a lot in the war and stuff. Yes, we were. I was uh, bombed out twice in the war. Well, do, do you think that Gen Z, the problem is they haven't experienced that? No, I think the problem is that they're um, not able to get jobs, mainly. And not all people, unless you mentioned about working from home. What about bricklayers? They don't work yeah. from home. Well, you're I right. Mean, you, I mean, too many people, I'm sorry to say this, of your generation assume that everyone works in an office. And that makes me very cross. No, you're they right. Don't. My husband was a metal polisher and he couldn't work from an office. Could he not polish uh, metal at home or...? Are you joking? <laughs> well, take a lump of car into a house. Oh, I see. OK, so not, it's not small bits of metal. It's, it's yeah. It's he... big bits of metal. Anything right. that's chrome-plated or shiny... No. OK. He, he, oh, right, he can't do that on Stornoway. Where did he work then, Peggy? We had our own little bu business in town. What? In, what, so, in London? Well done, brilliant. brilliant. In Colchester. Do you, think it, do you think people are unfair on Reem's generation then, Peggy? No, I think my, my grandsons, um, one of them's been through... Um, uh, is one of them a Bachelor of Science. He's been to uni. He can't get a job. Um, he's working as a barista in a certain coffee place. Yeah. And the other one is a, an electronics engineer, and there are no vacancies for that either. Oh. So, so there's no way they could get a house. And the deposits for houses are ridiculous now. I mean, my husband and I started together in 1955 when we got married. We lived in a caravan. On a council site. Do you remember how much your first house of... cost? My first house, £1,250 part of succession. Well done, Peggy. Thank you. There we are. I think Point that... proven. <laughs> One thousand two. I thought my parents, were... their first house was 6000 I always thought, God, Ridiculous. It. I remember my dad saying he used to lie awake thinking I paid £50 too much for it. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia in Hampshire, hi. Hi, Lydia. Hello. Hello. Oh, do you think Gen Z are lazy? No, I don't. I mean, I'm 25 and uh, me and my partner are uh, homeowners. Uh, we've done everything that, the right way that people say that you should do, um, which has cost a lot of money. Um, and as prices are rising and things, it's very, very difficult to maintain. And um, I feel that young people are shy to work because they see the government and the funding are easy to get their hands onto and the more people that do it, they seem to follow.
Okay. So, yeah, I mean, we're not shy. You have to work hard to get I could tell. what you've, you know, to get what you've got. Yeah. But I feel like the system is way too easy to get onto. And they, you know, I used to work with somebody um, and they got more benefits than I did yeah. working full time. I hear, I hear you. I hear you. Thank you, Lydia. Lynn in Glasgow, hello. Hello, Jeremy. Good morning. Je are we being unfair what? on Gen Z? Yes, I think we are. I have got two children who fall into Gen Z. Both have worked from the day that they left school. One's just managed to buy his first home at the age of 23. Um, and I think this whole... You know, a couple of bad apples and a whole generation seems to get wiped out. It's ridiculous. But see something else that's not been brought up. This is the first generation that have had to go through the minimum wage structure. And that I don't find fair either. You know, like they're 18 and they're doing the same job as anybody else, but they don't get paid the same money for it. And I think that's a lot of where the problems okay, fall. I, I hadn't thought of that. Is that right, Rian? I, th I think it's part of it. I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that what well, the earlier caller was saying about the fact that there aren't those jobs available. But also, Lydia mentioned the this idea that there are so many these people on benefits. There are currently 5.3 million people in allowed benefits. Part of that is making work pay, but also the fact that we've made it so easy to claim ben out of work benefits for mental health issues. Mm. Okay, but J James in Kent is on the line. James, you tell me which we got the whole generations up here for you, James. Where are you? my friend. Hello, I'm, I'm in Ashford in Kent. Yeah, where, where are you on the generations, James? Oh, I, I think younger people work harder. And I think a lot of young people, with the way the world is now, and especially society, they have no option but to work harder. M mortgages, rents are through the roof, wages are at an all-time low. Uh, and there is just, there's no option for young people to work harder. I think the older generations have actually had it a lot easier. I'm I mean, I've guess up, I've... you're a millennial from the way you're talking. Uh, 36, so I guess... 36, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That. So you're banging... So that's, the, that's Storm's generation. So Reem, Storm, me, Nina, and then the brilliant Peggy who we had on. Wow, we've got all bases covered. And, and, and millennials do work hard. Thank you, James. Malcolm in Somerset. Hi, Je Malcolm. Help me find you, please, on the map of the generations. Uh, baby boomer. Born what year, sir? All right. 57. 57. Was that the day the music died? That's where it started. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, how do you feel about Gen Z then, Malcolm? Um, not very well, I'm afraid. Go on, why? Well, why not? Reem can take it. Why? Um, why? Why don't you like me? I worked for several years in a, a hospitality company, a very large one, and we used to take an intake of maybe 50, 60 newcomers each week, and within a fortnight, half of them had gone because it was a very busy environment, quite hard work, and they simply couldn't hack it. I hear, I do hear that, frankly, and I don't like to say it, but it's clock, the idea that if you work till five, you properly leave work at five. Nina's generation five Absolutely was the, not. the moment you but, start but, but there, all this business of, I'm not feeling it today, and I, no, no, I've got no. to take a day off Is because it's there are There are lazy people in every generation. All of those stickers will have lazy people there, and they will also it have seems to me hard that work a greater people. proportion of what you call lazy people. I think that the problem is that they feel entitled to have much more there. Entitled. There it is. There's the word. We are entitled. Gen Z are entitled. So you feel in, you feel entitled Absolutely that the not. world owes you a living. This is ridiculous. The world does not. You have to work they, hard. They've been left in this weird situation where they're depending on what's called the bank of mum and dad. Well, exactly. Partly that I think that people feel as though, and this is generally speaking, they feel as though it's the government's responsibility to pay for their wages. And you've got huge amounts of people, almost 5.3 million people in out-of-work benefits across all generations. The problem is but the housing crisis. It's, and it's your people. generation it's have people, housing so, for my generation. People, I'm talking about people going into a job. These are the people who are not putting the hours in. They're not prepared to be part of a team. It's a, it's a, it's a narcissistic, selfie-driven <laughs> generation <laughs> who, who are very right. happy within okay. their own world and don't care we have about to, whether they're I letting you other want to come back, down or not. But we've, we've given Nina the last word there, which may be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all your calls on this.